Hey everyone, welcome to today's Flash webinar. We're going to be talking about Bain shopping campaigns, reports you need to drive optimal performance. My name is Jamie Newton and I am the communications manager for Hannapin Marketing. And your presenter today is Richard Park, who is a, a Bing product ads expert at Microsoft and Bing Ads. Um, he's been in the industry for eight plus years, originally from our part of the of the U.S., the East Coast, and says that data feeds are the future. Um, if you want to follow him on Twitter, you can follow him at our park data feed. Hey, Richard, how are you doing today? Doing well. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Glad you're here. All right, so real quick, just one housekeeping item. If you want to join the conversation today, include the hashtag ThinkPPC in your Twitter tweets. If you have questions, use the webinar question box to send us questions. It's right there on your control panel. Um, if you guys, real quick, send us a hi, hello, and just make sure that, or let us know that you can hear us. Um, we will have a live Q&A at the very end of the session. Um, so go ahead, fill out those questions. We'll get to them at right after Richard's presentation. All right, that was quick housekeeping. Without further ado, Richard, take it away. All right, thank you for having me again. Um, I'm Richard, like uh, Jamie said. I've been at Microsoft for about two years now, uh, working on emerging platforms such as shopping campaigns and remarketing. And today I'm happy to present to you about the reporting system within Bing Shopping Campaigns. So we have three agenda items that we want to cover. One is the Bing Shopping UI reporting within the UI. Other one is pulling the BSC reports from the reporting tab and then looking at your search term reports. So today we're going to start with the dimensions report within the UI. So when you're in the actual uh, Bing Ads UI, you have a new tab once you started a shopping campaign. So once you have shopping campaigns running for about a week or two, you'll start to accumulate data. Rather than going in and pulling reports out, you can directly go into the UI under the Dimensions tab and start pulling reports from there. And within the Dimensions tab, when you go in there, you have a drop-down filter where you can choose between five actual uh, filters for just for shopping alone. So you have your category, your product type, your brand, your item ID, and your store ID. <clears throat> when it comes to the UI reporting, the best practice, and what I re highly recommend, is using the item level ID, item ID reporting. The item ID reporting is the most granular reporting, which gives you item line item detail reporting. And then you can see here you have the column headers for this uh, dimension report. And you can see if you have the UET conversion tags, you'll be able to look at um, your C you can look, look at your conversions plus your conversion rate and your CPA. But then again, you can look at your average CP, CPC, your CTRs, how your clicks are doing as well for every item that's actually live with from your uh, product feed. Uh, other things that you want to look at when you're uh, filtering through items based on your business goals. So you can export the filter to KPIs. Um, one thing that this report's good for is that when you're looking at your C CTR and you're looking at your clicks and impressions, when you're filtering through those from highest to lowest, you can determine which items are performing well and that maybe you, items that you might want to bid up on or items might that you want to bid lower or even exclude from your actual uh, campaign or your product groups, right? So you can definitely look at that. And then you can also look at the attributes in here. So in the column headers, you see you have your categories, your product, you have your brand, that will show, show as well. So maybe you're just noticing a trend with the brand, and the brand is performing really well. Maybe you might want to break that out and emphasize a higher bid, or you notice that certain category of product type is performing well, right? So you can break that out as well, or you notice, or you know, a brand or category isn't performing well, so bid down or even exclude that brand per se. So definitely use the dimensions report within the UI uh, just to get a quicker glance at how things are performing. So Bing Shopping Campaigns, you also have two new two reports within the actual reporting tab. So when you go into UI and click in the reports tab at the top, you'll be um, we'll have these two new reports I'll show up. The partitions report and dimensions report. So what the partitions report is, it's basically an overview of the product group structure and breakouts of how everything is um, broken out from the campaign to the actual product uh, group. So if you have one product group that's broken out by your just by brands, it'll give you all the KPIs just from that product group. Kind of gives you an overview of like how you how things are structured and then gives you the actual the KPIs around it. The dimension report is 
basically like we what well, we just went over is within the UI, but there's um, it gives there's more detail that you can add to it and the additional attributes as well. Um, the reports I definitely recommend you know using these reports and you scheduling them maybe on a weekly or biweekly basis just for you guys to uh, get it out just to uh, for a way to look at how you perf you're performing as well. And uh, definitely using these additional attributes will help you uh, to optimize your campaigns as well. So for when you're pulling up um, a dimension report, there's some additional attributes that you want to make sure that you add in there. You want to make sure you add your brand, your category, your condition, your custom labels, and your product type. That's not that's not automated in there, so you want to definitely add that in there. <clears throat> so from the partition of dimension report, um, there are these new additional attributes under the um, perform statistics. So one the the new attributes, there are five of them. The impression share loss to budget, the impression share loss to rank, benchmark bid, benchmark CTR, and impression share. We highly recommend that you guys implement, implement these performance statistic attributes. That way you can optimize further. So when you go into the UI and you're, um, you're using this report, whether it's the dimensions or if it's the partition report, just add these into your columns. And you, then you'll just be able to run the report. And you can also do it by the device type as well. So there's a desktop and a uh, tablet, then there's mobile. So run those reports. You get a data output like this. I, I had to hit, I had to hide some of the columns that were irrelevant to this because I wanted to show you the additional attributes and how they work. So definitely, um, we call this kind of like share voice reporting for us uh, internally. But what what it gives you here is you can see basically your benchmark CTR, like how all the advertisers, their CTR is performing against your products. So that way it kind of gives you an idea of, hey, maybe, um, you know, what, what, how come my product isn't showing up as, how come my product isn't as relevant, right? It might have to do things with the actual title and the, pro, and the product feed, or it might have to do the way your site's even optimized. Then again, you can look at your benchmark bids as well. Uh, your benchmark bid is looking at, at the actual, you know, competitor's bid within that um, actual product group versus your bid versus your product bid. Um, you'll be able to get an idea if your bid is, if you're over-indexing or under-indexing. Uh, again, then you can look at your impression share lost budget. Um, if you're under-indexing your budget or if you're over-indexing, and then again, your impression loss to rank. Uh, for rank, you can look at, you know, for this, you can see here that impression share loss is 60 to 76% uh, for the first item here. So definitely you want to increase your bid. You can see the benchmark bid is 66 cents here. Your average CPC is 35 cents. So if you want to get more competitor competitive and you want to get um, you want to gain more impression, definitely increase your bid here, for example. And you know, benchmark definitely use this. Um, I schedule this on a weekly basis and then, you know we think it's the best practice for everyone to schedule it and just take a look at how everything's performing as well. And like again, like I said again, um, for a dimensions report, you're able to look at you know how you even might want how you might want to even break things out more granularly, or how you might want to group things out. You can use again like your brand, your categories, your custom labels to see these are what we should be targeting more, and, or and you know playing around the bids as well what we should be excluding. So here are some definitions for the benchmark bids, impression share percentage. Um, Definitely use this uh, just to give yourself an idea how it will work and how you might want to optimize. The main things that I really look I look towards again is your benchmark bids, your impression share loss to uh, rank, and your benchmark CTR. Benchmark CTR is a good indicator of you know how's your CTR against uh, basically everyone else who's competing in the same space. And then you know is it like I said is it due to your feed? It's due to your site? Maybe you need to do some feed optimization, change your titles, change your descriptions, add more things into the feed that will make your, feed, uh, your products more relevant. Um, benchmark bid and impression share to law, impression share loss to rank are more where you can do some bid optimization as well and test things out. So definitely uh, keep this in the back pocket. Keep a, take a look at this on a weekly to bi-weekly basis. So the next thing that we want to look at is the search term report. Search term report basically is, you know, it's a good way to look at which queries are triggering your product ads, which queries that you might want to negate as well. So within the uh, reports tab again, there is under the drop down. If you search, if you um, choose a search term report, there you're able to decide, um, you know, choose a summary for the unit of time, 
and then you can download the report, and from there you will be able to, you'll get a list of all the search terms, and it'll give you an idea of what KPIs around it. I like to filter it from highest to low, from highest to largest to smallest for clicks and impressions. Get an idea of which key, uh, which search terms are performing, and which search terms are not, because you can see your CTR, you can see your spend as well. And if you have, um, if you then you can back end into your conversions as well, and you can look at. Basically, you know which items that you might even want to negate, or which item, which search terms you might want to even it, include into your product title. So, like, let's say that you're missing a search term in here might be like, um, you know, we have products called like Nike Air Zoom shoes, right? But you notice that Nike Air Zoom men's shoes is a high uh, search term, so you might want to add the gender into your product title. So, this is a good way to look at, you know, how can we better optimize my title and description as well. So definitely uh, start pulling the search term report and using it just to um, make your feeds more robust or even negate things as well. So take a look at that. And I think this one, we're pretty quick on this one because uh, right now we're back at the live, Jamie. <laughs> so here I think we're uh, ready for questions. Yeah. Um... So uh, real quick, um, while people are filling out some questions, first of all, Rachel, thank you very much um, for doing this webinar for us. Um, it's always great to have Bing on a webinar and uh, spreading the knowledge and um, you know getting that stuff out there and explaining some things and clearing them up. So we are absolutely so happy to have you on a webinar with us. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you for your time, uh, and thanks everyone for joining this call. And please, uh, have you, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Yeah. Um, well, it looks like you you've just done an awesome job because <laughs> nobody's asking questions. So, uh, but they're still staying on the line. So, um, they must be wondering if, if other people are going to ask questions. I don't know. Are you guys shy today? You may. You must be shy. Um, all right. Well, if. Uh, Nobody is going to ask some questions. Um, uh, Richard, we'll go ahead into that last slide. If you do have some questions, um, you can either tweet at Richard um, online. <laughs> tweet at Richard online. I'm sorry, guys. Um, you can follow Richard on Twitter. Um, Richard, will you say your Twitter handle again real quick? Yeah. It's uh, our part data feed. Perfect. Um, or if you want to contact Hannapin directly, you can reach out to us at marketing at hannapinmarketing.com. But thank you guys for attending today, and um, we'll see you later. Thank you. Thanks.